Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. Hello, everybody. This is Sandy, and I am the founder and chief love officer at LastFirstDate.com. I want to thank you for joining us here today. Last First Date Radio is a show about achieving healthy, off-the-charts love in the second half of life. We have a fabulous show coming up for you today. I'm going to be speaking for the second time with best-selling author, advisor, and coach Lance Secretan about relationship rules for bedroom and boardroom. I liked him so much the first time that he's coming back today to share some more of his wisdom. And as a dating coach, my specialty is helping women date as the high-value women that they are in every other part of their lives. And and that goes for men too, but I specialize in helping women. And I do believe that when you know your true value, when you know your worth, you attract your most aligned partner. And so the work that I do with women is to help them really own their value. And often it's it's really just kind of uncovering the true self that got lost along the way. And actually I had a client this morning and we were talking just about that very same thing, about the truth is that we are we start out with this wonderful approach to life. We have, you know, zest for life and excitement and over time a lot of our true personality can get lost when people have put us down, when we've been in the wrong relationships. And so my goal and my mission is to help People find the love that they deserve, and you have to start with finding it within yourself. So uncover that beautiful hidden self that might be hidden, that might have gone into survival mode and, and you know, boom, boom, boom through life, and, and really um, uncover that so that you can connect on a deep level with the right person. I um, just wanted to let you know that if you haven't yet grabbed a copy of my free guide, I have put together a guide of the top three mistakes that midlife daters tend to make over and over again without even realizing it. And I give you not only the three mistakes, but ways to turn them around so that you can find love um, in midlife. So if you would like a copy for free, go to lastfirstdate.com and you can sign up on my home page. And for any of the women who are listening, I have a Facebook group that is called Your Last First Date, and I would love for you to join the conversation going on over there. People are getting the support that they need. Um, They're making less assumptions and less judgments because they're putting their questions out there, and I'm giving them some really good tips to help them succeed in dating and relationships. So if you would like to join us, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash your last first date. We are so delighted to be sponsored by audible.com. And if you join Audible through our URL, which is audible.com forward slash last first date, you will get a free month of Audible service plus one free audio book. And Audible is fantastic. You can take your books wherever you go. So uh, there are 180,000 books available on audio books through audible.com, and, and they're one of the top, top um, Audible audio book providers. So go to audible.com forward slash last first date to get your free book and a free month of the service. And now it's time to introduce our special guest coming back for a second time. Lance Secretan is a renowned he's renowned worldwide as a prolific author of best selling books on leadership. He's also an advisor, a coach, and a mentor to leaders. He holds a master's degree from the University of Southern California and a PhD in international relations from the London School of Economics. He is the 1999 recipient of the International Caring Award from the Caring Institute. He's an expert skier, kayaker, mountain biker, and avid trail hiker, and divides his time between homes in Ontario and Colorado. 
And the last time he was here, we were interviewing him about his book, A Love Story, an intensely personal memoir. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but we're really going to talk today about the new rules for relationship rules for the bedroom and the boardroom. So welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, Lance. Delighted to be here. Thank you for bringing me back. Thank you. So where do we begin with the bedroom and the boardroom? <laughs> um, <laughs> so you had mentioned something at the uh, during our last interview about how many successful leaders do not have successful relationships. So um what what have been some of the reasons that you see that happening? Well, I think there are lots, aren't there? And I don't mean to be the expert on any of this, but um what I think happens for a lot of people is that they separate the different parts of their lives. And for example, I'm sure that people who lie in business possibly don't do that so much at home. And yet, you know, the rule would be similar. So I think in the end what happens is that there are driven executives who sacrifice much of their personal life in favor of their professional life, and then a lot of the time they realize that they've missed something, and they also realize that their behaviors in those two worlds, which are really only one world, are not aligned. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've definitely seen that in in a lot of my clients where, well, they're not aligned, but I think that people often, I actually see the opposite. Um, I see that, that a lot of times if you're doing something in one part of your life, you're doing it in others. So yes. if um, So if you're, if at work you're not a team player, for example, right. and you um, then often at home, you're also not a team player. If it works, right. you're not a great communicator, then it can often show up in your personal relationships as well, right. um, your anger, all those issues. So um, so you're saying that many times it's the separation that um, that causes this kind of disconnect. Yes. And I think you know, the thing I've discovered uh, over a quite a long period of time. I've written 15 books about leadership. The last book was not a book about leadership. It was not meant to be a book about leadership. It was about the amazing 30 years that I had with my late wife. And along the way, what I've discovered in previous years is that leadership is really a broken subject. And the real subject we should be talking about is inspiration. And you can see that in leadership, we don't talk so much about leadership in the family, but we do talk about inspiration in the family. So now we're actually talking about one word and one behavior, which applies both to home and work. Now, if I take it one step further, this last book I wrote, which is called A Love Story, that's about a very inspiring relationship. And if I look at what made that relationship special and it would be lovely i think if you and i played a game together about what are those ingredients that we would be Mm -hmm. talking about you know then i think if you said well then why don't we do that in the workplace i mean why do we single out any single area of our lives when in reality it all boils down to one thing and that is to create an inspiring relationship so you know a marriage that doesn't work no longer works because it's not inspiring anymore. Mm-hmm. And we're doing things which are uninspiring. But a brand, let's say like Starbucks or Southwest Airlines or Disney, for, for people where that works, there's an inspiring relationship with those organizations. And where it doesn't, it's no longer inspiring. In other words, wherever there's an inspiring relationship, there's magic. And whenever that inspiring relationship breaks or is disrupted or is dysfunctional, there's no magic, and indeed, it leads to separation. Hmm. And that's why I break up with every boyfriend. <laughs> it's really true. I I once had a coach who told me that there were three ingredients that you need to look for in a successful relationship, and one was mutual learning and teaching. So you mm-hmm. should both be teaching and and learning from each other, which is to me very key. 
Right. Another is mutual inspiration, and that was a big one. Right. It was like that was an aha for me. And right. I think the third one was like mutual trust. But right. the the um, the inspiration piece has been very hard for me to find. And I I love my life. I lead a very inspired life, and that wasn't always the case. But I that's important to me, and it's important for me to be around people who are constantly growing and learning. And and I see that with my clients, and I just had this conversation the other day with one of my clients who was in a relationship with somebody, and she was not inspired. And, right. And I said to her, that's that's a deal breaker. You no know, kidding. You, you need to be with somebody like that. Like, But see, what what happens is a lot of people will look at a relationship like she was having where the guy's nice and he's got good qualities and um, he's a good guy. It's just not enough. You know, there's a yes. lot of really good people out there. So I think people are afraid to say, well, but there aren't that many great people out there. So, well, you know, I, yeah, I have a theory about this, and I'd love to know what you think about it. But I think there's a lot of work done in in uh, dating and relationship uh, coaching and so on about searching for the right person, you know, kind of a a template, you know, in looking for the right person. But actually, I think it it's more useful to look at it the other way, which is, to become a magnet. In other words, if you're really inspiring, most of the time, when I say most of the time, I mean like 97, 8 percent, you're you're allowed a couple of points off, but not much more than that. (laughs) To feel really inspiring and choose always to be inspiring and spend as much time and learn as much as you can about being inspiring all the time, all kinds of people will come to you. Mm -hmm. You'll be choosing from the candidates. Mm-hmm. Because you're a magnet. People want to be with you. And all kinds of people want to be with you, including a bunch of people you don't want to be with, but they'll want to be with you. And then a whole <laughs> bunch of people you do want to be with, and they'll want to be with you too. So choose. Which one would you like to be with for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. And my motto used to always be, be the love you wish to find in the world. And yes. it's it's a similar thing. It's like whatever you want more of, you should adapt that. You should be that. And when you're living your life in that place, it's amazing how expansive your life becomes. Uh, absolutely. And actually, the last guy I dated a few times, um, the last date we had, he said something that really turned me off. And what he said was, I asked him about his friendships because to me, friendships, really say a lot about you and um, he said well I don't really have many friends anymore you know since my divorce I don't really have friends and he said you know I find that my life you know as we get older our lives get smaller and I said what do you mean by that he said yeah no kidding well you know we just you know things get smaller and my life is just not as big as it was and I'm really looking forward to being with a woman who's going to like fill my life up and I was like, Get me out of here. Wow, I said to no him, kidding. I I my life has expanded exponentially in it, at this stage in my life and it keeps growing yeah. and I need to be with somebody who's got a similar outlook. Yes, absolutely. And I think you need to have some uh, alignment of interests to um, mm-hmm. basic things, you know. For instance, in my case, I'm, I'm very keen on the outdoors. Um, I'm very athletic. I'm very engaged with the outside world. And uh, and I'm very busy. I'm on airplanes and running around the world all the time. So I'm trying to put those two pieces together. Well, somebody who doesn't want to be uh, outside, for example, is simply not going to be part of my life. I mean, it's just I, I might be very fond of them, but we get on each other's nerves. I know that. So that's not part of the world that I live in, you know, mm-hmm. when I choose a partner, it, that's how I would make one of the criteria. Mm-hmm. Right. So one of my clients was saying, I met this really great guy and he's not active because he's got some medical issues. So, but he's really nice. I think I'm still going to pursue a relationship. And I said, you are the most active person. You were out like 
you know, yeah. climbing mountains and yeah. doing, you know, 10-day hikes out in the wilderness, you know, he might be a good friend, but he's not going to yes. be a good partner for you. No kidding, unless you want to be a nurse. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to be yeah. a nurse. <laughs> right, right. Um, so are you actually looking to to find somebody again? I mean, you've been through No, a I have. No, I have you already. Have. Yes, I wow. have. Wow. You're and, quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, no, it's a wonderful, wonderful relationship, and um, I'm I'm very lucky. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Well, you're lucky. And, but and not, you know, the magnetic theory works. <laughs> yes. So, how did you meet her? Um, as you know, I live in ski country. I'm I have a home up in the mountains, and uh, I have a very, very close friend who I ski with very often. He's one of the top skiers in the country, and um, he had a mutual friend uh, who used to come. He's a musician, so this friend used to come and watch him play music, and uh, one day we were both in the same place, and we uh, connected together, and the rest is history. Mm, well, that's great. But a lot of things you see that are there, I mean, all the athleticism, uh, dancing, music, skiing, you know, all of those pieces all fit, and I think that's really mm-hmm. important. I think if it had been different from that, I think it wouldn't have worked at all. I mean, I've had lots, I, I meet a lot of people, so it's not like there's a shortage of opportunities, but so many of those don't fit from a uh, practice point of view, interests, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Right, but also, you know, it's, it's also mindset. So you had to be open to meeting her. Um, she had to be open to meeting you. And right. you've been through a lot of loss, and some yeah. people shut down after loss. They are not open. They don't really believe in the possibility of finding love again, and that's inspiring that you are. Well, you know, it's funny. It's it's a very touchy subject for me, as you can imagine still, because it's not long ago that my wife passed away. Um, it. It wasn't that I was open. Actually, I was pretty closed, I think. I, I was grieving. I was in big pain. I'm still in big pain. Um, I And I'm not canvassing, if you know what I mean. But I'm also very aware of opportunity. And when I see something that's remarkable, I'm not going to let it slip through my fingers. So then I had you know, the complication emotionally to say, gee, I'm not sure I'm really ready to do this, and yet I don't want to miss this opportunity, so I'm going to have to try and close the circle here. It's very complicated. And just a footnote to this, there's a very interesting article today about Liam Neeson, the the actor, whose Mm -hmm. wife was uh, Natasha Richardson, who died in a ski accident seven years ago. He's Mm -hmm. still grieving, but apparently the news is that he's found someone he's in love with, and he is doing exactly what I'm doing, and that's why it resonated so much with me, which is, uh, you know, as I've told my new love, um, you have to know I'm in love with two people. Mm-hmm. You know, you on this plane, and my wife, Patricia, who's not on this plane, but I'm still in love with her. Mm-hmm. Big time. Yeah, you don't just stop. No, sir. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you have to have that conversation, too, about are you okay with that? I mean, I've got a book out that's doing really well and is all over the place, which is about my late wife. And how do you feel about that? You know, right. Uh, that's going to be in your face a lot. So how's that going to work for you? So all those mm-hmm. pragmatic conversations one has to have, they've all worked out beautifully. She's been incredibly supportive. And so, you know, it's it's been... It's been good. That's good. Well, she must mm-hmm. be a, a very secure person to be okay with with it. Yeah. Well, again, it's it's up to us too, isn't it? It's not. Of course, she is. She, she's fa- fabulous. But I want to make it easy for her too. I need to be inspiring for her. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it could just start jarring, couldn't it? Right. Right. Yeah. And it takes yeah. responsibility so, from both ends. You know, yes, we, exactly. we all have it's to not, contribute. That's right. So it's back to your earlier question about. You know, I, how do you find the right partner? I think it's it's really about being so inspiring mm-hmm. that that anybody worth their salt wouldn't dream about not being with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So people leave partners when the magic is gone, when there's when there's no inspiration. Right. Right. And um and so so let's tie that back into work. Is that also why people leave jobs? Of course. They they yeah. they're inspired by the new job and the new boss because uh, they don't know anything about them, either one, the company or the boss. But they they hope for the best. It's human nature. And then of course Sometimes you get disappointed and let down, and it's not as uh, rosy as you had hoped. So now the inspiration starts to evaporate. And with a little of that, you can survive. And that's what it is. It's survival, not inspiration. But if it deteriorates too badly, you can't stand it anymore, and you're out of there. And that's basically the same for a corporation or a marriage or a friendship or anything else. Yeah. Hobbies. Yeah. You know, interests, cars, <laughs> movies, music, you know, it works the same way everywhere. This is the this is the sort of great discovery, isn't it? That if we understand that, then we can say uh, something else too, which is I'm only going to be inspiring and I'm only going to be with inspiring people. Right, so you need both. So because yes. this could definitely, this conversation could be completely misconstrued and people might think, oh, as soon as things are not as inspiring as they were, I'm just going to walk away, and I'm going to keep walking and walking and walking and hoping to be inspired by everybody, but I'm not doing anything to create my own inspiration. Right. So you need both ends of the coin. Um, and I've I've left a lot of jobs. I'm always shocked when people stay at terrible jobs, and they're they're killing them. They're killing, killing, killing them. They're having mental illness, breakdowns, physical ailments. I'm never going back to that job. My gallbladder was just removed. I had I had a heart yeah, attack. I had yeah, this. Yeah. And then they're right back because right. there's a certain safety that they they go back to because of that feeling of scarcity or whatever it is that I need this. Um but you got to take risks and you got to you got to keep looking for what really inspires you. And and I have to say I'm an artist, and for the first 50 years of my life, that's how I identified myself as a painter and an art teacher and an artist. And <clears throat> and then I got into coaching, and I put my creativity into a different outlet, and I don't feel the need to, to paint and draw as often anymore. And mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that i think like right. you said you know if, if something isn't inspiring you anymore but something else calls to you then follow that path well you know sandy we're here for a very short time mm-hmm. and what is the point of going through life saying you know i'm going to work for my uh, get my kids through college and pay my mortgage off and da 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 and then i'll retire and then it's all over and phew, I'm, I'm glad that's over That doesn't make any sense at all. That's no way to live a life. You need to really put your foot on the gas, live large, live it fully, and if it should end, it ends. But let's, like your friend you were talking about, or at least somebody you were dating earlier, you talked about, the image that went through my head as I heard you speaking about that was, I want to be a rocket. And I want Mm -hmm. that rocket to keep rising. It's never going to go down. Mm -hmm. The only time it'll ever go down is when it goes out. Yep. But I don't care about yeah. that. Right. <laughs> I'll be in another <laughs> domain there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing is that people fear death so much and they forget to live. And yeah. and you're gone, you're gone. I mean, you know, you, you at least die knowing that you lived a full a full life and you did your best and you made a difference in people's lives. I mean, Yeah. I, I think you you talked about uh, you know mutual learning too, and that's so important. We do get set mm-hmm. in our ways as we get older, and there are things that we sort of say, "No, I'll never do that," and so on. And one of the things I'm I'm learning now, for example, in a new relationship, is that I I want to be open to things I've never done before, which my partner knows about, like sailing. Mm-hmm. I have no interest, never been involved in sailing, don't know anything about it. Uh, but she does. She's an expert sailor, and uh, you know, sails off into the uh, into the wilderness in, a, on, in the ocean. And um, so I may get to learn more about that and 
play in that arena. That's new learning for me, but it also is inspiring for her because she has someone to do that with. Mm-hmm. Well, also just being open to what somebody can teach you is such a great way to connect yes. in, a, in yes. a very deep way. And I, yes. even, like, I, I had a boyfriend about six years ago who was really into football, and I wasn't into football. And I just said mm-hmm. one day, I'll sit down with you and just walk me through a game. I want yeah. to learn what this is about. Well, yeah. I got through about a half a game, and I was bored to death. But yeah. but I was open, and yes. that meant a lot to him. Um, yes. you know, I took him to a museum. He had never been to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which I couldn't believe. He grew up near New York, and right. he knew nothing about art. And I introduced him so yeah yeah it is that's one of the most exciting things to me about being with a new partner is is learning from them you don't want to yes. clone you don't want somebody who's everything you're you are which is what a there's lot of people another are thing thinking. too that i think is interesting i hear a lot of women saying there are no good men out there mm-hmm. um and i i hear it but you know all the all the good women must have been married to um, good men, or many of them. They couldn't have all been bad. I mean, there must have been some some advantage, some of them. And there's a <laughs> presumably a roughly even number of these human beings, you know, women and men. So they must be out there. And I think one of the issues that is troubling about relationships is the cynicism and the sort of depression of, oh, it's a meat market out there and there are no good guys and, you know, that old joke about and men are like parking meters, you know, the, the, there are very few of them and the best ones are taken. So it, it's sort of like, you know, that kind of dismal view. And I just think you should really erase that. Get rid of that idea. There are, after all, 7 billion people on the planet. There's going to be one for you somewhere. Uh, I agree. I think that what happens often is that people also don't take responsibility for what they're putting out there, which takes us back to the inspiring thing. Yes. Um, yeah. And there's so many assumptions made. So a lot of the work I do is helping people turn assumptions into curiosity mm-hmm. because if you're making a quick judgment about why somebody does something, and that's that's a whole other discussion, but the culture of dating today has shifted so much because of because of women's lib, because women are successful in the workplace, and um, a lot of men don't know how to be with women anymore. They think they have to be more effeminate, more you know feeling oriented. So that yes. means they have to lose their edge, which yeah. makes them less attractive. And the women are showing up with this masculine energy where they're yeah. aggressive and I yeah. have to be right and you're wrong, and you know, yes. and all the guards are up and nobody's connecting anymore. Running, <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, indeed. That's that's certainly a common, and I I think that um, if you the word we haven't used much, a couple of words we haven't used much in this conversation are humility and vulnerability. You know, I mm-hmm. think what kills a relationship is ego, mm-hmm. and if the ego is driving the activity and the and the connection and the chemistry, I think it's in heading for a bad place. We could just park the ego and say, how do we love each other more? Yeah. And that's hard for a lot of people. So I agree with you. Humility and vulnerability are so essential, and it's essential at work as well. Um, yes, of course. I I have yeah. seen um, – there are two, two people I've been following on Facebook who have really risen to the top in their fields pretty quickly. One is really humble, and they both came from humble beginnings. One is still humble and grateful and um, just really appreciates his blessings and is so generous with his time and he's giving and and has boundaries. The other one is just his whole approach turns me off so much and Mm. it's like, you know, I'm killing it in this field and if you buy my program, you're going to kill it too. And um, Yeah, it's just, and there's there's a dishonesty and an insincerity there that I don't trust. And so, you know, don't forget where you came from. I mean, and yeah. and be vulnerable. I mean, that's that's what connects people to people, no matter if you're in business or in a relationship, a romantic relationship. Right. Well, what you're describing those, those is the breath. push. 
you know, that, that you got to, got to buy my stuff. You got to do that. That's a push, right? Whereas mm-hmm. what I was describing is a pull, being a magnet, mm-hmm. which pulls the energy towards you. It's very interesting, you know, if you're a, an inspiring person in a room, just try being inspiring at a cocktail party or in a room of people. People mm-hmm. will come to you. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And if you that push and hustle and so on, people do what you do, which is, you know, they get turned off and they get irritated and they go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Push, pushing is going to is a motivation and pulling is an inspiration. Yeah. I had these, these two young men came to my door trying to sell me home renovations. <laughs> and yeah. we ended up getting into a conversation about dating. And um, and they pulled out their phones and showed me their, their dating app. They were on Tinder. And this guy didn't understand why women are not interested in him. And he's doing a lot of, like, push marketing. Yes. Um, really a turnoff. And he's getting mm-hmm. right into um, conversations about alcohol and sex before he ever has a conversation with a woman, thinking that that's what, that's what women like. And I'm like, oh, my God, you need to have a connection here. You need mm-hmm. to connect with her so that she feels yeah. safe with you. Um, so... It was really. Yeah. It's hard to know where to start with that sort of situation because it's so off base that you just don't know where to begin. You know, mm-hmm. I think if they send him home and have him uh, have a talk with his mother. Yeah, I don't know that mothers are always so knowledgeable about what makes well, relationships he missed, work. He missed something growing up, you know. Yeah, so he may not may not be able to get it from his mother. But I, I actually gave him some really good relationship books to look at, and they both ordered them on the spot. They were like, "Wow, Ooh, I can do perfect. this and be confident and feel good." Well, good and, learning. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. yeah, I know. You never know yeah, where it's going to come from. They're open. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's important at every stage of life, and. Uh, you know, and what was interesting is that the work that they do, going door to door, doing cold calls, which is one of the hardest things to do. Um, mm-hmm. They said that they love the work environment because the guy who runs their company is all about growth, personal growth, and really mm-hmm. paying attention. And I was thinking, you know, in terms of this conversation, this is a guy who understands relationships. That the relationships mm-hmm. you have with your fellow employees imp- are is really important. Um, helping them to grow, helping them to learn, helping them to get better at whatever it is that you're training them to do. Yes. See, I think you're making my the point I was making earlier, which is that everything is connected, everything is one. So mm-hmm. if you think that the terrible relationship you've got at home doesn't show up at work, that you just have a fight at home, you come to work, and everybody wonders why you're so cranky, and it's not surprising. You can't keep it out of your life at work. So it does show. I know you are under the illusion that it doesn't show, but the rest of the world doesn't agree with you. So mm-hmm. if we were to simply touch the relationship part of that person's life, that leader's life, we would change how they are as a leader, and we would change the fortunes of that company. It's mm-hmm. that connected. I mean, I know in my own work, I had a phenomenal work, a relationship with my wife, and she was truly inspiring, and I hope I was, was for her. But she filled my heart when I went to work. You know, so when I would go to work with a client or wherever, my heart was full of the love I had for her and therefore what I wanted to share with everybody else. So she was directly influential in the outcomes that I was bringing to bear, on major corporations. Hmm. That's the connectedness of it all. Now, just reverse all that and say, you know, supposing the opposite happens, I would have been nowhere near as effective. Mm -hmm. Seeing the connectedness, and I just think most people don't understand that connectedness. What you touch over there is going to affect over here. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's a really good point, and I think people often don't see the connection. And right. So what can they do to start shifting the, the dynamic both at home and at work? What can they do to, to change it? To change it, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I think that uh, the first thing is to remember that 
a relationship is a serving relationship. It's not about what's in it for me or what, why don't you do this for me or that for me or whatever. It's about how can I serve you? How can I make your life better? How can I inspire you more? How can I love you more? What different ways can I be a better partner for you? These are the questions we should be asking. If you just pile that on in as many ways as you can, how can it go adrift? How can it go wrong? And how can you not receive the same thing? And honestly, if that doesn't happen, if that isn't the recipe that works for someone, then there's something deeply dysfunctional about the relationship, and it's time to look at that. Mm -hmm. But if I said to you, Sandy, you know, what can I do for you? How can I make your life better? I think the way you would think is, well, that's really nice. Um, Well, here's what you could do. But I need to be thinking, too, about what I can do for you, because I've not been asked that before, and I want to be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Now you're on a spiral that's rising. That's a beautiful place to be. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And I, I think that people often give from the wrong place. They give to get. Um, they mm-hmm. don't. Yeah. They give out of obligation, but they don't give from a place that's deep within. That's right. deep within their heart. And right. um, so. And- and yeah. play is very important here, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll remember from reading um, a love story that you mm-hmm. know there were a lot of rituals that my wife and I engaged in. The cards that we sent each other, uh, the, the outdoors, the way we played with clouds, um, the way we played with our dog. I mean, there were just so many things that were rituals and playfulness uh, issues that, that deepened our connection. And th- mm-hmm. that's very, very important. We don't play a lot. I mean, if you think about executives at work, you don't think of an executive as a playful person. And yet play is so important. And I don't mean frivolous things, but things that are intimate and build intimacy. Mm-hmm. So people doing, for example, having, um, what do they call it, when they have like a professional development day and people do group activities yes. together and right. um, let but their hair down. Watching a sunset with, with a glass of Merlot. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I, uh, can I read you, I don't know how much time we've got, but can I read you uh, one of the poems from the book? Sure. We just have a few minutes, actually. We're running a little bit over, but this is so interesting that I'm I'm good to go. Well, um, there was a... a you know, after my wife died, I, uh, um, I I remember sitting on my own wondering where she was. And, uh, you know, I, I thought about, as one does when we lose a partner, where, where are you? And I was sitting in the hot tub at my home and the sun was coming up. And I realized that the sun was beautiful and therefore... It must be her. And I realized as I thought about this, everything is beautiful, especially the things that we love, these rituals and these things that we share together. So this poem became, It Must Be You. The call of the loon, the alpen glow, the eclipse of the moon, they're beautiful. So they must be you. The double rainbow, the mist in the veil, the silent snow, they're beautiful. So they must be you. A puppy's love, Sunset and Merlot, the clouds above, they're beautiful. So they must be you. These favorite moments of magic and joy, here at least, they're beautiful. So they must be you. They say that God's in everything, the dances we share and the songs we sing, they're beautiful. So they must be you. I searched for you, looked everywhere, and then I knew. Everything's beautiful because it's you. Beautiful. <laughs> Those are some of the rituals that we shared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's you know that's just that solidifies a relationship. Having those rituals to 
that mm-hmm. make it personal, that make it yours, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and make it special. Yeah. Um, beautiful. So I think we've covered some, you know, basically just to sum up that there are connections what you do in with what you do at work and what you do in your relationships are very interconnected. Correct. And when you yeah. improve one, you improve the other and um and the key is to be inspiring and to look for inspiration and to be inspiring and to bring humility and vulnerability and play into your life, into your love, um, that there are good people out there and <laughs> that they're not right. all missing, but right. that you have to inhabit these qualities and you become magnetic to the right partner. Beautiful summary. And I would just add, we have to live that, not mm-hmm. just intellectualize it. You know, this is not a theory. You have to mm-hmm. actually breathe it. You want people to be looking at you saying, wow, you're really inspiring. Yeah. Well, you are inspiring, Lance, and that's why I had you back a second time. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Thank you. And, you know, I love your message, and I think that people really need to to inhabit it, to believe it, um, to be it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting uh, me. I loved it. Yeah, no, I loved it too. And um, tell people where they can find you once again. Uh, Secretan.com, S-E-C-R-E-T-A-N.com. Uh, also Amazon and all of the online uh, retailers, a love story. Awesome. So I will, um, and I will give you a nice review for your book. I really like it. Thank you. It. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the great awesome. work you do, Sandy. Thank you, and all the best, and we'll be in touch. Lovely. Um, Yes, and thank you all for listening in today to Last First Date Radio, and I hope that you all go on your last first date very soon. Have a great day.